good morning students today we will be discussing how to calculate uh, the quantity of heat to be supplied or to be removed we represent this by q small q that is different others uses uh, different uh, notation according to macab and smith we use this notation uh, q small q represents quantity of heat to be supplied this is to be supplied this is during the heating during heating and the quantity of heat to be removed during cooling okay or sometimes we even say that it is a enthalpy change so what is the example here that is in chemical industries uh, sometimes uh, uh, we get the gaseous mixers at uh, high temperatures then it is necessary to cool down those uh, gaseous mixers that means we need to remove some quantity of uh, heat and also another uh, application is uh, uh, some uh, high temperature reactions uh, those reactions will take place only at uh, high temperatures then it is necessary to heat uh, the reactants that is in the form of liquids uh, then only to supply the reactor so it is necessary to heat the liquids uh, then uh, what amount of heat is to be supplied to raise the temperature that uh, calculation is very important because without uh, knowing uh, the engineer uh, cannot start the operation without knowing what amount of energy is to is required to be supplied because if he supplies more unnecessarily the energy will go waste if he supplies less the task will not be done that is why it is very important because cooling and heating are very common uh, operations to be carried out in chemical industries so uh, for this process uh, we should know we should learn how to Uh, calculate the quantity of uh, heat energy to be supplied or to be removed uh, and uh, one example we will see you consider consider water at 30 degrees centigrade okay then heat it, it is to be heat, heat this to heat to 80 degrees centigrade okay heat to 80 degrees centigrade so in order to heat water from 30 degree centigrade to 80 degrees centigrade it is necessary it is necessary to supply some amount of heat it is necessary to supply some amount of heat and this is represented by q okay it is represented by q then another example is uh, uh, let uh, uh, let so2 is to be cooled let so2 is to be cooled from 600 degrees centigrade to 400 degrees centigrade this is the task so in order to reduce the temperature of so2 from 600 to 400 degrees centigrade it is necessary to remove some amount of it here we are supplying here it is necessary to remove some quantity of heat some amount of heat this is also represented by q so q is calculation is a very important and what are the units of q here say kilo calories or kilo joules or anything sometimes Uh, if it is rate you know kilo calories per hour if it 
is rate. Okay. Simply total. Total if you want to know that is in kilocalories. Then now we will uh, learn how to calculate this Q. In heat exchangers, particularly in heat exchangers, we bring into contact hot fluid and cold fluid. Then what amount of heat will be lost by the hot fluid? That calculation is required. So, calculation of Q. And this calculation of Q, we can divide into two categories because it depends upon the, is there phase change or not okay if there is phase change what equation we will use if there is no phase change latent heat calculation will come so uh, without the phase change and uh, with the phase change in case of without phase change and in case of with the phase change in case of with the phase change okay both are two different cases depending on the case we select the equation so in this without the phase change means what uh, example we can take water say example say water at 30 degrees centigrade is to be heated is to be heated to 80 degrees centigrade okay this comes under without a phase change not only water in chemical industries many liquids are to be heated and we know that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade so initially also liquid only water liquid form only here water it is 80 only at 100 water will convert to water vapor so there is no phase change here so without a phase change okay so in order to raise the temperature of water from 30 to 80 degrees centigrade what amount of heat energy is required then we use this equation q equal to m cpm dt okay without phase change without phase change we use this equation m CPM DT or sometimes N CPM DT that depends upon the unit of depends upon the unit of CPM we write M or N so here what is suppose in this example DT means what DT equal to T1 minus that is higher temperature minus lower temperature that is in case of cooling it is in case of cooling T1 is higher T2 is lower or D2 is equal to T2 minus T1 in case of heating ok suppose water is being heated from 30 to 80 degrees so this becomes t1 and this becomes t2 we are heating water we are heating water so heating t2 minus t1 t2 is higher t1 is lower like that we need to take and what is cpm cpm is mean specific heat mean specific heat in the temperature range in the temperature range of t1 to t2 in the temperature range t1 to t2 okay because suppose here 30 to 80 water so in this range of t1 to t2 30 to 80 what is the mean specific mean heat cap, specific heat capacity mean specific heat or mean specific heat capacity ok 
okay so this is how to calculate that now depending on the units uh, about this uh, calculation of uh, cpm we will discuss uh, in the next class so here we will simply we are uh, just writing its units what is uh, cpm units that is say one example we will take uh, say kilojoules per kg per, per kelvin okay or kilojoules per kg mole per kelvin anything it will be this is molar heat capacity and this is uh, in per specific heat capacity okay so uh, depending on the, the, this data will be given in the problem CPM data that is stage wise we are going to learn in the first stage problem what we are going to discuss CPM value will be given to you then how to calculate the Q in the second stage uh, calculations CPM value will not be given to you directly but we will calculate first CPM and then we calculate the Q. So CPM, uh, suppose if CPM is given in kilojoules per uh, uh, kg here, yeah. if CPM is in kilojoules per kg per kelvin, then take Q is equal to, because it is mass now, M CPM dt, okay? because m is kg and this is kilojoules per kg and this is kilojoules per kg per kelvin and this is kelvin okay kelvin kelvin gets cancelled kg kg you will get cancelled q you will get in kilojoules okay so if CPM is in kilojoules per kg per kelvin, take Q is equal to M CPM dt. Okay? Or if CPM is in kilojoules per kilomore example unit I am giving any unit it can be kilocalories or anything then Q is equal to you need to take N CPM dt ok because N is kilomoles N is kilomoles and the CPM is kilojoules per kilomole per kelvin ok this is CPM into Kelvin. Okay? So, kilomoles, kilomoles, Kelvin, Kelvin, you will have a kilojoules. So, Q is equal to M CPM dt or N CPM dt. M or N, you take based on the units of CPM. So, when you work out the problem, uh, first you need to observe the units of CPM. Then, if it is per kg, you take M. If it is per kg mole, you take N. Okay? So, this is, this calculation is without a phase change. Okay? This calculation is without a phase change. If, with, and one more important point, um, in this case of with phase changes, temperature change is there, okay? Temperature changes from T1 to T2, okay? Temperature changes from T1 to T2. That is an important point. Now, here, with the phase change, you consider consider water at 100 degrees centigrade is converting into 
converting into water vapor is converting into water vapor at 100 degrees centigrade. This is the process we are considering. That means here water at 100 degrees centigrade. This is converting into water vapor or steam. Okay. Steam at 100 degrees centigrade. This is the process. Here you can notice boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. This conversion is taking place at its boiling point and you can notice that boiling point is not, uh, temperature is not changing. T remains constant. T remains constant. But the phase is changing. But phase is changing. Okay. Temperature is remaining constant but the phase is changing. So in there, in this type, how to calculate Q is Q is equal to M dot. Here also M dot you can say N, N here normally. Uh, because sometimes M dot means flow rate. If it is per hour, here per hour. That's all. If this is just mass M, here only per hour won't be there. That is the difference. So, M dot lambda V or N lambda V. Okay. This is in case of with phase change. How to calculate Q. That means what is lambda V? Is latent heat of vaporization latent heat of vaporization okay and its units are kilocalories per kg or kilocalories calories or kilojoules whatever it is kilocalories per kilo mole it can be anything or kilojoules per kg Okay, so uh, how do you take Okay, if lambda V is in given in kilocalorie per kg, then Q is equal to M dot into lambda V. Okay. And second thing, if lambda v is in a, if lambda v is in kilocalories per kilomole, then Q is equal to, okay, then Q is equal to n into lambda v because this is units. If you substitute here, kilomoles into Kilocalorie per kilomole gets cancelled, you will get a kilocalories. This is also kilocalories. Okay, here also like that. Kg into kilocalorie per kg. Kg, kg will get cancelled. You will get a kilocalories. Okay, so Q is a U, we use here. Temperature is not to be seen in this, isn't it? That means because temperature is remaining constant. If temperature is not changing, dt will be zero only, no? So here, yeah, because temperature is constant here, that is not coming into calculation. Q is equal to n dot n t. It depends all how much heat energy we need to supply uh, or how much heat energy need to be uh, removed. Uh, if, if there is phase change, it depends upon the latent heat, okay? It depends upon the latent heat. So lambda V into M dot, M dot lambda V or N lambda V. Like this you can uh, calculate uh, all this. This uh, separately we will discuss after two, three classes. Uh, we will discuss problems uh, with the phase change. Now next class uh, without a phase change problems, uh, small calculations just to build up the concepts. That's all. 
नेक्स्ट सेकेंड क्लास इन दिस इज स्मॉल प्रॉब्लम्स टू बिल्ड अप द कॉन्सेप्ट हाउ टू कैलकुलेट क्यू इफ सी पी एम वैल्यू इज गिवेन देन इन थर्ड क्लास वी विल डू द एक्चुअल प्रॉब्लम बिग प्रॉब्लम इन दैट वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट सी पी एम एंड देन क्यू थैंक यू